Coffee, uh, Radio Vision Network's uh, talk show on Friday, Fridays with Carol. I'm Carol Moore from the Organic Green Cafe at White Briar Bed and Breakfast, and we're into a, a time period when we're going to talk about some healing properties that a lot of people aren't familiar with, but my specialist that I have here today, uh, he knows what he's talking about, and a lot of it I have been using over the decades and found them to be very successful as well. So let me introduce you now to my guest, and if you will please tell them a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Pete Glowacki. I'm a, uh, I went to college bunches and bunches and bunches of years ago, got a degree in biology, I thought. Instead, my, my document said pure science. Whoa, lots of chemistry, lots of physics lots of biology, a little bit of math. So I'm a scientist. And uh, the day I took my final exam, I got my draft notice. And uh, Uncle Sam called me and he made me a uh, soldier. And I became an officer and I became an intelligence and security officer. Uh, I, then, uh, I then went to work outside of the Army in corporations. I worked for the big one right across the street here as security manager for a bunch of years. And I've been in that, and now I'm into teaching. I've been went to computers, and now I'm into teaching, and I teach computers. So I've been a technician. I've been playing with technical information for the past years of my life. And uh, about 20 years ago now, uh, we, my wife and I had a dear friend who called one night and uh, out of the blue and said, hey, how would you like to go on a boat ride? And I said, oh, yeah, boat ride. I love boats. And so I said, yes. And then he said, well, wait, wait a minute. i got to ask my wife. So we talked about it. And we rented a little canal boat out of, uh, Alt, out of Troy, New York, and went up the Hudson River and the, uh, the, the name is the Lake uh, Champlain Canal, okay, all the way up to Sha Lake Champlain. It was beautiful, it was wonderful, you know, a couple of days up, three or four days back, it was great. On the last day, the lady who had called us uh, and I were alone in the bow of the boat. It's the first time in the five or six days we were together that I was alone. And we all knew that she had been suffering from cancer. And we all knew that she was bringing us together, the group that was on the boat. She knew that we were, she was bringing us together so that we could um, kind of rebond with her and her husband, more importantly. Her husband, um, she knew she was dying, or she felt she was dying. Well, on that last day, we were sitting in the bow and decided we needed something to drink, and we went in, in to get a soft drink or a or wine or a beer or something. And into the into the uh, galley area we went. And while we're in the galley, she says, uh, I, I asked her, what was this growth or this thing that she had on the on her collarbone? And and she said, Oh, that's my stent. That's where they put in the medicine. And then she came closer, took my hand, and put my hand on her chest. And and I said, what are you doing? She says, you have a lot of power. I go, power? She goes, yeah, you have a lot of power. And if we had been closer, I think that I'd still be well. I don't think I'd be dying. So, you know, I'm taken aback by this. It's the last day of the trip. My wife and I are heading back here to New Jersey. And... Uh, I told her about this this incident, this thing that had taken place. And she said, oh, you've got to go see this lady. My wife was at the time a practicing psychologist working in a clinic facility, clinical facility. And so what she did is, is uh, she set me up with this lady. And the lady said, oh, good, I'm giving some classes. Let's do some, well, why don't you come to one of my classes? And I went, oh, all right. What did I know? And you're the scientist in it for 
just to learn something new for the exactly, science. Exactly, exactly. Yep. Learning new things. <laughs> so what happened is, is I, I, I uh, went to the class and uh, it was, uh, she was telling us about chakras. She was telling us about auras. And, you know, yeah, yeah, chakras and auras. You know, uh -huh, I've heard Chakra, of which is supposed to be a, me well, uh, a medical. Well, no, no, it's it's actually a, a term that comes out of out of um, Hindu philosophy, Hindu practice, I guess, and they've been looking at chakras for the past, you know, I don't know, a couple thousand years, three, maybe three, four thousand years. And the body has basic, basically uh, seven chakras. Uh, the first one is at the bottom of your torso, and it, it it connects you with the earth. The second is your sexual chakra, number two. Number three is the solar plexus, and it's about here. Uh, number four is your heart, which is, you know, was considered to be everything you know, for a long, long time. Uh, the fourth is is here in the upper chest. The fifth, oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Four, five is the upper chest. Six is the what they call the third eye. And it's your intelligence, it's your insight, it's your ability to see the world. Assess, assess the world around you. Uh -huh. And the final one is the top of your head, the seventh chakra, and that one is your connection to the universe. And you were skeptical of this when you were? Uh... No, I was skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> I was really skeptical. And then she started talking about auras, just touched on auras, and I went, yeah, all right. So she started a little practice, and she said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take out a pendulum. In fact, I brought one. It's somewhere here in my pocket, which maybe it'll come out, and maybe it won't. And she brought a pendulum, and she said, okay, every chakra is defined in a specific way, and the, the, the energy that flows out of the chakra, didn't do, do much detail, flows in a position, in a condition like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put somebody on a table, on a massage table, just a standard table. And you go over their different chakras, chakra points. And I got this young woman who... I said, well, what's well hold that thought for a second. We're going to break to a commercial, and we're going to come back, and we're going to learn more about uh, this pendulum uh, here on Radio Vision Network, Fridays with Carol. We'll be right back. Simply Gents, located in Marlton, New Jersey, takes care of all your grooming needs, including haircuts, straight razor shaves, massages, facial, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. To find more information or book an appointment, visit us online at www.simplygents.com. The secret weapon of a well-groomed man, Simply Gents. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Today's show was brought to you by Alicia Kelly of Whitehorse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Alicia is your RV expert. Contact Alicia at alicia at whitehorserv.com or give her a call at 856-262-1717, extension 203. When you think of RV, think Alicia Kelly. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. 
because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Extra Innings is the nation's premier indoor baseball and softball training center featuring indoor batting cages, seven multi-use tunnels, and training rooms. Extra Innings can provide professional instruction, private and group lessons, and the best year-round clinics. Along with a nationally recognized pro shop that features the latest and widest selection of equipment and apparel, our experienced staff can provide you with the right instruction and help you find the best equipment for your ability and budget. Extra Innings, where the game never ends. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. And welcome back to Radio Vision Network. Uh, morning Coffee is the show, and every Friday it's called Friday with Carol. I'm Carol Moore from the Organic Green Cafe at Whitebriar Bed and Breakfast in Edgewater Park, New Jersey. And today we are really in the ballpark where I like to play. And that's about how to make people healthy and do it without the pharmaceutical companies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let us continue our conversation, and we're going to be using a pendulum. So would you tell us why you have a pendulum in your hand? Well, I, I brought the pendulum because they. Th this is what we used for diagnosis assessment. We don't diagnose doctors. Diagnose. We assess the health of a person and. And at this sample training session, uh, I had this young woman, and I was like, oh, "What's going to be wrong with her? You know, what, what, what is, what, what can we? There's nothing wrong with her. She's 23, 25 years old." So I went over, went over different parts of her body, and a couple of them, they, they were, there were problems. There were the, the pendulum would swing the opposite way, and and I was told that's that's not good. And I said, so what does it mean? And they said, well, you, you take the coursework and you'll learn about that. And we did. I did. I went through coursework for a, for a bundle of years. And the, the coursework was for healing touch. And I mentioned I mentioned my friend, uh, our, our dear friend, Tootie, who died. On the boat road. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. boat ride. Yeah, she, right. she died. Mm -hmm. She died. And uh, I couldn't get to her. I didn't know that I didn't need to get to her. You know, energy just flows, and uh, let me talk a little bit about where this all started. Okay. There, there was a woman by the name of Janet Mentkin, and Janet Mentkin was a nurse, and she apparently worked in hospitals, and um, she worked in hospitals, mostly in the uh, uh, central Colorado area, finally settled around around uh, Denver. And what time period are we talking? Uh, we're talking from the, I guess, late 40s, early 50s, up until she died. She only died a few years ago. She died about 10 years ago. But she worked in, in uh, the Colorado area, and she founded an organization which became the Colorado Center for Healing Touch. Well, she and a bunch of nurses that she worked with discussed what they were doing. And one of the things that they that they discovered, I'll just let go of that for a minute, one of the things they discovered was that at night, Janet and her co-conspirators would go to the beds of patients, and while they were sleeping, they put their hands on them. They touched them. Touching a patient, wow, you know, something the doctors don't do anymore. That's correct, right. What a novel approach, that physical touch. Of a doctor a caregiver right. to a patient. Right. So they put their hands on these patients, and the patients didn't really know. Sometimes she'd just sit and hold their, hold their arm, hold their hand. And she talked about what she was doing. You know, she was caught by her fellow nurses, and they talked about what she was doing, and she said, you know, my people survive. My people get well at a greater rate than, you know, 
the ones that I don't touch, the ones that I can't get to. And so the, these other nurses and Janet Menken got together and they, they kind of formalized, they put together a, a formula, a, a set of procedures for assessment. And they came up with a program and they called it Healing Touch. Healing Touch. Now, it actually tells you what it is. A touch that's healing. Exactly. I mean, yeah. And what they did is they set up an organization to train people to do this healing touch. Now, I think, I think that nothing happens in a vacuum. Nothing ever happens in a vacuum. That's a scientist talking. And, and what I believe is that she was aware of some of the work that had been done under Reiki. Reiki got started about 50 years before Janet Menken started doing her thing. And in those days, in the 60s and in the late 50s and the 60s into the 70s, people started experimenting with things like, uh, uh, with things like acupuncture, acupressure. And we know so meridians. much more about that now. We knew nothing about it. Everybody thought it was quackery back in the 60s. Yeah. And, and yet the ancients have used it for thousands of years. <laughs> thousands, yeah, 4,000 4, years maybe. So I think that they started talking about, well, what are we doing? What are we actually doing to these people when we put our hands on them? And they came to, the, to a conclusion that it was a transfer of energy. And, you know, I... I I wrote a little note one time, and I said something about you know one of the one of the people who may have influenced this is Ole L. Einstein, with his concept of you know we are energy, energy is matter, matter is energy. You know you do the acceleration to the speed of light twice, but you know squared. But what happens is is you got energy. I'm mean, energy and matter. They're interchangeable. I had a teacher in high school, and this teacher said to us that if we took our finger and we just poked at something, poked at something an infinite number of times, somewhere in that infinity of times our finger would actually meld with the stuff around it because all, we are only electrons and protons and neutrons and if those things aligned the way our finger was aligned at that moment, we'd become part of that and, and it's just energy. It's just energy. And I said, wow, this is this kind of goes back to what my teacher said, you know, back so many years ago. Uh, I had to tell a little story. I, I, I had a, some friends up in North Jersey, and they called me one time and asked me if I would come up. I just started into this training. And they asked me if I'd come up and help this woman. They, well, they had two friends who were very ill. And... I agreed. I went to see them. I went to their house, and this woman showed up and interviewed me for a, for a while. And we finally went into the the people who owned the house did massage. They had a massage business, so there was a table set up all the time. And I put her on the table, and I went over her and I checked her out, and I, I said, you know, this is this is uh, you know, nothing wrong with your knees. You got a little arthritis. You got a little arthritis in your hip. And then I was prompted, and I, you know, man-woman thing, I, I was prompted to go over her breasts. And I drew this line on my piece of paper. I always have a piece of paper that shows, you know, just an outline of a body. So I went to the other breast, continuation of the line. It shouldn't have done that. It should have been a nice, if she was helping, it should have been a nice circle. Nice circle. Yeah. Hold on that thought just for a minute. We're going to go to commercial. and. Don't you dare turn that TV to another station because this is so interesting, you will want to get involved in this. We'll be right back with Radio Vision Network, Morning Coffee, Friday with Carol, and some interesting stuff we're doing today. Be right back. Today's show is sponsored by Hardgrove Demolition, your demolition experts. Hardgrove is a family-owned and operated business right here in the southern New Jersey area, bringing you 45 years of demolition expertise. Hardgrove has all your demolition needs, from emergency demolition service to demolition equipment rental. 
Fargo is one of the state-approved recycling facilities right here in the southern New Jersey area. No job is too big or too small for Hargrove Demolition. Contact them today at one of their three locations. When I was injured, I couldn't play basketball for my entire sophomore year. After years of wear and tear, I knew something was seriously wrong with Deja's knee when the swelling wouldn't go down. Young athletes are still growing. They need specialized care only available here at Dayton Children's. I wanted the best care for Deja because I wanted her to return to the thing that she loves to do, and that's basketball. At Dayton Children's Sports Medicine, we're treating tomorrow's champions. Right care. Right now. Right here. Dayton Children's. Just right for kids. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skorani, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. And we're back with Radio Vision Network, Morning Coffee, Friday with Carol. And as I said... We are right up my alley here with my organic green cafe. I'm the oldest, fattest, uh, healthy woman you ever did see. I've been organic since I was 14, I believe, in all of uh, the uh, properties around you to keep you in positive and healthy, healthy life. And my theory always is live healthy until you die. Yes, we know it's inevitable. We're all going to die. But wouldn't it be nice if we lived healthy right up to the moment when they pull the plug? And so now we're going to go back one more time. So pay attention because here we are. And what can you tell us? How can we find out more information about this? Okay, let's let's go there. Um, there are two organizations that uh, that, that provide a, a framework for healing touch. Two that I'm aware of, and one is the Colorado Center for Healing Touch. Just go to their website. Just go to Google and do it. Colorado Center for Healing Touch, or Healing Touch International. And I believe Healing Touch International will live, give you a list of practitioners in every state. You just go to the state and just say, you know, check out the practitioners. There are tons and tons of practitioners around us, right here in New Jersey, but nothing like Minnesota. I don't know why, but they've, they've all kinds of practitioners there. Let me, let me finish my little story. So I'm working with this lady named Alice, and uh, I knew I was going to be working with somebody. And so I'm dri as I was driving up to, uh, to where they lived in Sussex, Sussex County, um, I, just got, I was just south of Parsippany, just south of Route 80. And all of a sudden I had uh, ask her what she's going to do with the rest of her life. I went, what? This was one of those, if you build it, he will come moments. Amen. Same voice. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they use the same angel. But anyway, the point is that it happened three more times or four more times, I don't remember, as I, as I went up to where I was to meet this lady. And uh, we did the session. I did a second pendulum job on the side of her breast, and she said, oh, that's where my cancer is. When we... When we worked on, when we, I, you know, she had no other real major issues, but this, when there was a cancer. She took my hand and she put my hand like this, and there was a walnut under there. And I started talking. I, I was babbling. I did not know what I was saying. I was just babbling and saying things about the, the, the condition, the, the cancer. And I do remember that I said something about tentacles, there being tons of little tentacles coming out of this uh, this growth. And those tentacles were uh, invasive, they were all through her breast, and she said, oh, I'm going to have surgery on, on Wednesday, and they're going to do a lumpectomy. I won't let them take the whole breast lumpectomy. And I said, all right. I said, so we set an intention. So the first thing was the assessment. The second thing was the 
The second thing was the intention. And I said, let's get an intention to make this thing congeal. Just congeal. And when the doctor opens you up, he'll just take it out, throw it away, put it in a little pan, and they'll examine it, and it'll be done. And it was. And it did. And she lived another seven years. And, and about seven years later, I got a call. Alice is sick again. She's got another cancer. I go, okay, where? And he's someplace else. And I went, all right, all right. So I met with her, and she said, I said, so shall we do our thing? And she said, no. She says, I'm done. I'm finished. In the house were her daughter, her granddaughter, and granddaughters, and great-granddaughter. She said, I've seen enough. And I said, well, you know, let's prepare you for your trip, you know, for your, for your next phase. She says, I'm ready. I'm ready. And I said, you know, my blessings on you. Best to you. I hope you have a good life. What remains of it? About, about four months later, she died. So she had given up at that at that point. She yeah, had, yeah. She had completed completed the cycle of her life. Yeah. And was ready to move on. Yeah. And I, so your cancer um, 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 notification and and your help with her cancer uh, gave her additional time. It did. And and that's that's all we can ask in this life. We all know it's inevitable, but let's put it off as long as we can. And this uh, healing hands really seems to uh, to give people the power that they really have. Well, what, what we did in, you know, in the classes that I took, one of the things that I, I learned was that you have, um, you, I, I don't use my power. I, I was working with this group, and uh, I ran into this lady who had been in my first class. And she uh, she. I said, oh, I got to ask you a question. She said, I, I said, I am, I get so tired during these sessions. And she said, she slapped me across the chest and she said, that's because you're doing it. You're doing it. You're expending the ener energy. My own internal energy. And she said, you haven't been using the energy that the world gives you. And I went, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> So ever since then, I, I, they taught us how to do this, how to select, how to suck up the energy from the earth, or channel the energy from the earth, be a conduit for the energy of the earth. It's there. You know, people are going to see shamans. People have been going to see somebody you know, to help them. There's a kid out in, in, I think he's in Washington. You can write to him and send him a check for 75 bucks, and he'll work on you. It's like Edgar Casey. Right, right. Edgar Casey, my mother-in-law had all of his books. Absolutely. It's the like power is within you. You just have to find it and pull it out and use the energy that is there. Exactly. I mean, if you, exactly. if you, even if you go back to biblical teaching that we are made in God's image. Well, God is a God. I mean, do we have all the properties that a God has? Or do we have limited capacity, like we can't walk on the water unless it's frozen, right? But we do have the healing capability, and I have believed this all my life. And it's in your hands and in your body and in the energy that you pull from the earth and the other things surrounding you. So this healing hands is really, really a, a program that more people should consider looking into. And there are always classes. And uh, if anybody needs to get hold of me, I'm at, ready, this is P-G-L-O-W-A, 3190 at AOL. You know the rest of it. So if you, if you need uh, to get hold of me, you can try this organization, or you can try Carol, yes. or you can use that email address, P-G-L-O-W-A, 3190 at AOL. Why did I pick 3190? I don't know. That <laughs> was a good number at the time. <laughs> well, that's it for today at Radio Vision Network, uh, Morning Coffee, Friday with Carol Moore. Yes, I've been organic since I was 14. Yes, I've used all of these properties and many more, and I'm always interested in learning. And if you want Peter to come out to your women's group or your church group, uh, just give me a call uh, at uh, Radio Vision Network here or at 
stop by the Organic Cafe, 609-871-9555 if you need me, and I can give you the contact information for Peter. But go online for Healing Hands, and you'll find it there. And we'll see you next time at Radio Vision Network, Morning Coffee, Fridays with Carol.